Hello, I'm Kelly from Kelly Bilhan Arts in Brighton and we've got a really special exhibition for you. Um, it is Objects of Desire in Porcelain. I particularly chose this material area because I used to work in ceramics and I believe that ceramics can be a little bit undervalued in our society and I'd like to give that a little bit more value. And so I have six artists, um, starting with Tanya Gomez. Tanya produces this range of work, as you can see, it's um, very colourful ceramic pieces, um, predominantly vessels, but she throws. Now it's particularly quite difficult to throw porcelain to this sort of scale. So one of the reasons why I selected Tanya as one of our artists for this particular show is that um, she not only uses porcelain in what will be in quite challenging ways, it's quite unusual to see ceramics um, with this particular colour and also particularly porcelain to this size. Um, she, she builds them up to throw them in sections and she adds them together. Um, and then she distorts. So as you can see there is um, distortions happening around the um, top part of the, the vessel. Um, yeah, so as you can see it's got a quite good installation of work here. Then we go on to uh, Sally. Sally Garnett, she, she's uh, producing, at the moment, a sort of installation of uh, porcelain shoes, particularly porcelain um, ballet shoes. She's got um, an interest in ballet, and it's one of the things that she would have liked to have done and pursued as a, a young child. Um, they start off as a life-size porcelain shoes, um, based on um, she produces them off the real porcelain shoes. She also um, follows a lot of ballet dancers and looks at them and sees the way that they interact with their shoes and how they dance with the shoes and how the shoes are worn. And we've got a selection of her works here as well as a, an installation in the downstairs galleries. Uh, so that's Sally's work here. So again, using porcelain in a very different way usually in a way of its fine qualities, as well as using it for its white qualities to sort of glazes to shine. Then we've also got now is Caris Davis. Caris Davis, she, again, she throws porcelain. Porcelain not in such a, f a fine way, but she's using it in terms of its qualities, of its white qualities. She also experiments a lot with the surfaces, so you get these different um, glaze surfaces that she's using. Um, you can tell from her work it's thrown because she's got the thrown rings that happens on the inside. They're very, very beautiful, simple shapes. But porcelain, most of the um, makers have to be careful with porcelain in terms of the shapes that they create. If it's an open shape, it tends to collapse. So you find that there's certain shapes that tends to keep the shape of the um, porcelain, holds its form. Whereas again, just going back to Sally, she's using some of the fine qualities of the porcelain to use, use almost to mimic the fabric. Then we have, um, going over to uh, Maria Tenkorten, who's a Dutch artist, and she is an, uh, a renowned international artist. She works with a lot of the international bananas. We have here that she, what she does is she produces very small pieces of um, clay and she does it almost like an inlay uh, and then she recreates them. One of the characteristics as well with um, porcelain is it has, um, can be a lichen to linen. So you will find there is a, a distortion in some of Maria's work but this is the beauty of the porcelain. It has a memory which means that when it's constructed, if it's knocked or it's distorted, although the maker can actually make it completely cylindrical, when it goes into the kiln at higher temperatures, it reverts back to the shape that it was first created in. And you can see that with a, a lot within um, Maria's work, as well as you can with Karen Downey's work. But I just want to come over to the other side and show you some of Karen Downey's work. Karen works with porcelain in a very, very pure sense. So she's doing repeated forms, constant repeated forms, and I think it mirrors like a cycle of life. 
she makes small incremental changes. She, she's not interested in making big leaps and changes in her making processes. So she's repeating the form and then she's adding it together. She creates these installations, but it's not only that they're beautiful in their own right, but they also can be functional. And in a way as well, you can either have them so that they're much more centered or you can produce them so that they have a little bit more of an interest in the way that they are visually seen. Her work tends to be, again, thrown, but using porcelain in its purest sense. Again, mimicking this sense of um, a very pure, subtle uh, shapes that she's producing here. What a very simple glaze. We then go over to Sue Jameson. Sue Jameson, in a way, is working very differently than the rest of the, the other uh, strategists that we have on display here. She's using porcelain in a much more a sculptural way. Um, her work, which is based on sticks and stones, it's about human emotions. Um, so what she's doing, she's producing the forms and then she's cutting into them. So they will appear to be a vessel, but they're not a vessel. And so she then, then starts working into the surfaces with different oxides and mark making. So this is just a selection of the works that we have here, um, all shown alongside our staple of artists. Um, I hope you'll be able to come and see the show before it ends on the 26th of this month. Looking forward to meeting you and welcoming you here.